What do you mean? <laughs> <laughs> Everyone thinks that you're there. You're, you're you've already had a connection, like your friends already, and they'll just say stuff to you, thinking that you they know you already. Um. Uh, if know? that means that I try to be approachable, then yeah, yeah, I guess so. Yeah, I guess I never heard it put that way, but I guess so. Yeah, that's good. I I'm the same yeah. way. Like. Like I want people to stop and ask me for directions on the street. I want to be that person. Right. Yeah. I don't want to be that. Yeah. Do I have everyone in here? I think Everett is, is waiting. He's connecting. Okay. Jeffrey, is that you? One V Y M H Y? Yeah, that's me. Okay. I guess I put the password in to where I was supposed to put who who was who it was. Oh, okay. It's all good. <laughs> okay. Everett, are you can you hear me? I can. Okay, I think we got it. Oh, we got it. His face is there. Paul, you were there for a second and you disappeared. Well, the 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 only reason I disappeared is because oh there you are. Okay, now yeah. okay now. Oh, right. All right. Okay. It's a, it's a party. Wonderful. Okay. <laughs> it's a party. It's 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 okay. It's okay. Here we go. It's let's pick a key. Uh uh, let's see. It's a pick a key, pick a key, pick a key. Okay. It's my party and I'll cry if I want. Kind of low. Kind of low. If I want. Sorry. Okay. Sorry. Okay. Higher key. Higher key. It's my party and I'll cry if I want to. Cry if I want to. Cry if I want to. Okay. Never mind. Okay. Good. All right. Good. All right. So we're. Hey, hey it wasn't Leslie Gore that died. It was uh, Olivia Newton John that died yesterday. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, that's but, but yeah, but didn't Leslie pass like? Oh long gosh, time. like a couple of weeks ago, or was it a long time or long time? I thought it was a long time ago, but I okay. Sure. I think one of the. I think I just saw on Facebook one of the Whitehead brothers died. Uh, Whitehead. Yeah. Uh, you mean you mean uh, the Holland bro You talking about Holland the? Brother. Yeah. Well, no, it was, it was Dozier. Lamont Dozier. Yeah. Lamont Dozier. Yeah. 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 Oh really? It, yeah. Wow. Interesting thing about. Interesting thing about Holland Dozier Holland. Uh, all the hits they had together, when they moved to Los Angeles, they stopped working together and none of them had the success that they had when they were together. I mean, Lamont wrote, you know, some, some stuff. He had some hit records and a couple of solo records and he did the thing with, um, he did a couple of things with um, Phil Collins and stuff. And the Holland brothers, you know, produced, but it was never the success that they yeah, had. Yeah, that's for sure. That's true. And they were in, uh, in. Um, I mean, the whole the whole right. company changed completely. Anyway, totally. Yeah. They still yeah. had some success though after they came to LA, though. Yeah, not not like. Well, see, they not had even. left Motown before uh, they moved out here. They had their own company called H uh, HDH Holland Dozier Holland. Uh, they did Chairman of the Board. They did Free to Pain. They did. Uh, uh, they had a lot of hit records that came, actually came out of like one ads. All right, but that, yeah, <laughs> that was that was that was Holland Dozier Holland. In fact, Ray Parker Jr. played guitar on it. Yeah. You, you know the story about how, um, hey, Thomas, how they wrote. How are how you? They... Sorry, Thomas. <laughs> I know. Keep on going. I, I got it. These are this is more interesting than my own questions. Oh, no, go ahead, asked. Jeff. I was just saying hello. I, I was just going to say, you know, the story about how they wrote "Sugar Pie Honey Bunch." No, I do not. Do tell. So, so um, Lamont Dozier's dad. Well, his they his family owned a, a um like a like a barber shop, um you know kind of women's haircut place. Also, beauty shop is what we call beauty it shop, the, right? Is what we call it in the neighborhood. And, it is a beauty shop. And I guess the uh, the the dad like used to always invite the women in when they would come in for their appointments, and he said, "How you doing, sugar sugar pie? Hey, honey bunch." And he heard that, and he thought, "Oh, that's really cool. I could write a song with that." So that's where it came that's from. That's great. Yeah. <laughs> that makes a lot of sense. Always looking for inspiration. Yay. Okay, guys. I've never did a threesome before. I have to be honest. This wow. is a, I've, 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 had, I've only had one on one. Still contact. not. <laughs> <laughs> of sorts, maybe. Uh, yeah. No, I, I actually in real life too. Come think about it. Uh, <laughs> so uh, we're talking about the new album Jazz, Funk, Soul. That's a. Uh, the forecast is the name of the album came out just a couple minutes ago. So you guys are ready to do your, do your uh, PR on it. Um, I have some like general questions. I want to get into the album. Uh, they're fun, but you guys are having fun. And I don't know if I want to block the party. Um, do you want to do a round Robin or do you want to just do one person at a time? Uh, 
however you want to do it. All right. right. Yeah. Okay. So the round robin. So this this one goes out to Paul Jackson Jr. Are you officially the guitarist on Get Lucky from Daft Punk? I'm officially one of the two guitarists on Get Lucky from Daft Punk. It was myself and Niall. Yeah. He got credit yeah. for it. How come you didn't get credit for it? Just not I did. Read, if you read the album. <laughs> you got paid, yeah. too. Don't forget that. And I got paid. Or yeah. if you watch the Grammys, <laughs> the Grammys, when they got nominated, there was Niall and there was me. Okay, good. I know. It and, just seems like... I don't want to interrupt. Oh, not only that, uh, there's a song called uh, Give Life Back to Music that I'm also credited with writing. And that was also myself and Niall. I actually played on most of the record. It's a good album. It's a, it's a great yeah. album. Yeah. Uh, Everett, uh, I had an interview. Oh, I didn't play on Daft Punk. <laughs> uh, I should have. You, you may have broke up the band. I don't know. Like, they're done now, right? Um, yeah, they decided to call it quits, yeah. Uh, I did an interview with Michael Wolf two years ago for his Bounce album, and I spent the majority of the time talking about the Arsenio Hall show. Wow. Yeah. Because to me, that's one of the most pivotal, like, educational pieces I've ever had in my whole entire life. I think that that's a fantastic show. And I'm looking at your bio and it said, oh, you just went there once a week or were you in the van multiple times? And No, I was, I was only there once a week. Prior to my doing it, Dave Cos was doing it once a week and then Dave Cos decided he decided to leave and and um, they were auditioning people. I say auditioning. They were having people come in and sit in once a week uh, until maybe they found somebody they liked. And when I sat in, um, my manager at that time, Sherwin Bash, um, came to me and asked me after, after the sound check, is this something that you'd like to do? And I said, yeah, sure. And so he, he said, okay, and came back and said, it's yours. Was it chaos or was it organized chaos? It felt like there was a lot of like fun electricity within the, the show. No, it was very organized. Okay. Um, it was, um, I mean, yeah, they were, very organized. I, I thought, I don't know what Mike said, but uh, <laughs> um, I was only there one, again, I was only there once a week, but I have to assume by that one time a week um, that it was representative of what was going on uh, in its totality. So um, basically uh, I'd show up, they'd have the music already set for what they wanted to do that day. And uh, we have a quick sound check and then the, the show would start. It was it was pretty flawless, but but you gotta, you know, I only did it the last year and a half, so they had been on for quite some time. They had a pretty, a pretty well oiled machine going. It, it seems to me that like it, it's world, like uh, the world is turning, and people forget how important that that show was. Yeah, it was a pretty good, <laughs> yeah. Good cultural yeah, absolutely. Moment. Yeah, uh, Jeff. Okay, so yeah. you you were raised in Philly. I I did Philly for. Uh, 14 years. I just moved to Baltimore, so I've been in Baltimore for a while. Hey, well, the they, have the, they have the same accent. It's, they both have that terrible accent. Yeah, yeah they have the terrible accent. That I, I don't have to change it. <laughs> Plus, the row homes are, like, I get lost in Philly and in Baltimore because the row homes all look the same. Like, that same contractor did every single uh, <laughs> you know, brick row home. Right. You, you were raised with those Brecker brothers. Did you ever look at them and kind of say, hey, they have a talent enough to to um, blow up? Well, um, they, they were quite a bit older than me. So I didn't really know those guys growing up. Um, I uh, I definitely knew, I was a big fan of Blood, Sweat and Tears. Good. And and I knew that, that um, you know, Randy was a member of Blood, Sweat and Tears. And to have a member, have a Cheltenham High School graduate be in a, you know, big group like that, that was, you know, that's really, you know, of course I was, it, totally into music. I was reading the back of covers and seeing who's playing on everything. And the fact that somebody that came from my, you know, from my area was on that record was huge. And it's like, wow, I want to be, that's what I want to do. Is I want to play on records and, uh, and I want to be one of those people that's making records. And uh, it, it, the thing that's funny is I didn't really get to know, I never really knew Mike at all, unfortunately. Uh, but I did get to, I, I did get to work with and, and uh, tour and get to know Randy quite a bit. And the thing that's kind of amazing about that is that, um, you know, we were both, not only we went to the same high school, but we also made records with the same record company with Arista. We were both signed with Arista and both the Jeff Lorber Fusion and the Brecker Brothers made, you know, were basically signed to that label for like 10 years. Uh, 
-hmm. So basically, Randy and I, for the first 30 years of our lives, were following the exact same trajectory where we had the same teachers, we had the same A&R people, the same, you know, like everybody that we met were, were, were the same for the first 30 years of our life and as far as important people in our lives. So whenever we get together, we, we reminisce about, you know, high school and about Arista and, uh, you know, we have a lot in common. All right. While I got you on the horn, I got to go. Uh, you, you were, um, you studied chemistry in, yeah. in college. All right. I'm going to give you three uh, <laughs> things. <laughs> if you remember. Gonna, wait a minute. This is a test. You're going to give me a chemistry okay, test? It's a test. Yeah. yeah. Yes. It's a test. <laughs> yeah. I had this like gimmick that I was going to ask you all the chemistry questions and nothing about music. Like, that was my my gimmick. And I asked people, would that be corny? And they said, yes, it would be corny. So I said, okay, I won't do it, but I'll do a little of it. What okay. is what is uh, a, a Kelvin? A Kelvin? Kelvin? Well, Lord Kelvin was a famous uh, sci scientist in England. And they used his name for a, a, a different scale of temperature that goes down to absolute zero. So in other words, Fahrenheit, which which we use, isn't really used in serious scientific stuff, but, but centigrade is. But if you made centigrade, if, if zero wasn't um, the freezing point of water it, and make it the absolute zero, that's what the Kelvin scale is. So More it works well that. for, you know, for things like, uh, you know, cosmology and 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 real big picture um scientific work hey, hey thomas i'm just gonna let you know if you're gonna continue down this road with death, <laughs> you're you're in trouble i'm just letting you know just i said we're gonna be here a while i'm just letting uh, you know so. i'll let you know that this is what we go through when we're on the road so you you'll see this from time to time so jeff so ever and i will just we'll kind of sit here and wait <laughs> <laughs> all right well I did have oh, Pascal. Oh, no, he didn't put another one. I'm enjoying this. Good kid. <laughs> uh oh, I just gave it away. All right, Pascal. Um, okay, Pascal. That, that's is that um, Louis Louis Pascal? Is that right? Yeah. Um, what's it? That's um, uh, math. Um, okay. Well, I can tell you. It's been, it's been, it's math, right? Pressure. Oh, pressure. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So we're, pr we're probably talking about the, is, is that the 1800s or something like that? It started at the 1800s, yeah. Um, well, he's French, obviously. Um, I think I'm, I'm going to bail out on this one. Sorry, man. <laughs> That's okay. It's been a while. <laughs> All right, we got Paul. We got uh, American Idol. How was every time I went on American Idol, I'd be like, "Oh my God, there's Paul Jackson Jr." Oh my God, there's Paul Jackson Jr. The, uh, how was that experience for you? Was that something that you, um, I don't know, you just uh, somehow they got you every single uh, song you were you were featured, you were there. What was that like? <laughs> well, actually, what I had to do is I had to bribe the uh, the director. <laughs> He was uh, he was on my payroll. And uh, <laughs> in fact, it was funny. They actually used to have a joke that if you want to be on camera, make sure you stand next to Paul. Yeah. <laughs> and the funniest one was um, we actually had to split the band where we were in two locations where part of the they were broadcasting from downtown Los Angeles and from CBS. And so Ricky left me in charge at CBS and he went downtown and Jack Black was uh, the guest host at CBS. And so he turns around and says, hey, band guy. And then you see me in Ricky's place with the headphones and the guitar. And so <laughs> so it, it to, to make a short answer long, as I often do, uh, it was it was a lot of fun. And it was just a blast. You know, you got to play all different kinds of music. You know, uh, everything you learn as a, as a studio musician, you got to put into practice on one show. Uh, one week be, would be rock week, and then it'd be country week, then it'd be old old school week, then it'd be jazz week. And so it was just a blast being on that show. A total, total blast. I got to actually uh, do some spots on that show as well. You know, I as a as a working guy, I mean, if I was in town and available and they they called, I'd go down and do it just for fun. They, it's a long week. Those guys work. Yeah. Those yeah. Guys work. Everett, your birthday is April, I mean, April, August 17th. Are you a Leo or a Virgo? You're right on the cusp, aren't you? You're I'm Leo. Leo. I'm a Leo. 
All right. What do you got planned for your birthday? Are you working or are you taking some time off? I'll be flying to Washington, D.C. to start a four night stand at Blues Alley. That's right. <laughs> That's so I'll be traveling on my birthday. All right. You're going to be note next to one. self. Note to self. Get Everett a birthday cake. OK, good. <laughs> All right. It's, it's time to get into that album. Uh, OK, so it's called Forecast. Uh, it's on the Shanakee record label. Love those guys. They are so nice to me. Uh, the August 5th is the release date. I just have four tracks that we're going to play samples of, if you're able to talk a little about it. I have to start with uh, Fish Grease, because I didn't know what that meant, so I went into the Urban Dictionary. Stop laughing. <laughs> it, it's uh, to 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 really fly or to be hot or also to be balling. So that kind of identifies what this song is, too. Is that what you guys not... Oh, well, okay. Uh, once again, this is a, a colloquialism or a cultural phenomenon, if you will, in the uh, in the African American culture. Uh, on the stove, you had three cans of grease. Let's go. You had your chicken grease, you had your bacon grease, and you had your fish grease. Now, my mother, in her infinite wisdom and culinary expertise, just put it all in one can. But the proper way to do it was you had three cans: one for bacon one for fish and one for chicken. And so because this was kind of a funky track, I said, okay, bacon grease, ah, a little common, chicken grease, a little common, fish grease, that's the one. And so uh, that's from whence the title was uh, extracted. More, more of a literal meaning than anything. <laughs> yes, my, more than, yes. My mom did the same thing. All grease went into, once you get the bacon, it was all screwed up. But it was all screwed up, but it's, it, it tasted good. I mean, you know, it really worked well in cornbread. Yeah, yeah. Well, uh, I mean, cast cast iron skillet. You make the batter. Cast iron skillet. You take literally a scoop <laughs> of from the can of the conglomerate can. Put it in the cast iron skillet. Melt the grease. Pour the batter in the pan. Stick it in the oven. The best cornbread you will ever have in your life. Wow. I'm gonna try. I'm. I don't have grease in my house anymore. I'm afraid. Of <laughs> uh, along with the less, very many along, <laughs> I, along I mean, with arterial sclerosis and and diabetes. But hey, I digress. Uh, yeah, our whole house smelled for, you know, all the time. Now, I just, there's no such thing as grease. Uh, okay, Funkin' and AC, or AZ, I'm sorry. Funkin' and AZ. AZ um, without AC. Yeah, so the, the guitar intro sets up this song, up, and it's really funky. Where did that title come from? Well, I live in Arizona. I was Funkin' in Arizona. <laughs> <laughs> it was real simple. Um, it, you know what? Um, Originally, I named the song DS, and uh, that was after it was a, a kind of a, an homage to David Sanborn. Um, the song itself, when I when I was writing it, it kind of reminded me of a style of uh, of the style of recordings that David was doing back in the '80s, and um, and so the the working title for it was DS. By the time we finished it, and I'd already had Marcus Miller. Uh, play on it, who produced those records for David Sanborn back in the 80s and early 90s, as well as uh, Ray Bardani uh, mixing it, who mixed those early uh, David Sanborn records. Uh, by the time we had it in the can for the record, the record company uh, saw the title, it was just D period S period, and that was it. And they said, well, you know, we really like this song. We might want to use it as a single one at one point. It kind of needs a, a you know, a more appropriate title or a better, I mean, give us a meaning. I couldn't call it David Sanborn. So I just said, well, one one title of one title I worked with was Funkin' and AZ. Actually, that was the working title, the first working title. And then I named it DS. Uh, so I went back to Funkin' and AZ. Yeah, great song. We're going to play a sample of that also. Great. Uh, yeah. The uh, Keep Hold Noin has, like, Good solos for every single one of them. That's my favorite track on this album. Wow. Uh, yeah, I feel like everyone, Which everyone's track is able that? keep holding on. Oh, yeah. I feel like everyone gets a good solo. It, it kind of uh, breathes a little more. Um, any feedback on that before we play a, a sample of that? Um, Jeffrey H? Uh, yeah, that, that's one of my favorites too. Um, yeah. I love the groove, groove on that one. It's, and like you said, it's a nice change of pace compared to all the other stuff that's on there. It's a, it's a real 
sophisticated kind of slick track, which, you know, the other ones are, are more like full on jams, I guess. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, um, I, I disagree. I would agree with Jeff and, uh, <laughs> and just, you know, say it was just one of those songs that um, kind of wrote itself. And with everybody else's input on it, playing wise, it, it just really turned into a nice piece, really nice piece. I agree. I agree. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's something you would probably uh, extend a little more in, in uh, okay. concerts so you guys can really. All of them. Know, all okay. of them would extend a little more. <laughs> yeah. All right. So we got to close up with a, a CSL, obviously. Um, any thoughts on that? Because we're going to play a sample of that also. Well, the impetus for for that was obviously Chuck Loeb. And one of the things I loved about Chuck is he had an uncanny way of inserting the best bebop guitar playing on grooves. And so it was kind of a nod to being able to have a an unabashed R&B groove, in this case, sort of a uh, 90s, you know, if you will, R. Kelly kind of groove, and in, inserting some some jazz on top of it. So that's why, you know, that was the impetus for the song and, and that's why I call it CSL. Perfect. All right, we're, we're gonna play some of that. Yeah. Did you I was, want to say I, was, I just, Paul and I spoke a little earlier uh, when he reminded me of this interview and uh, I, was, I was just telling him, I just listened to that song for the first time since the record was finished. And um, I, I don't even think I heard the final mix of it until today. I, I when we spoke, I told him how happy I was with the outcome of it, and everyone's playing on it was was really really nice. Jeff really played some wonderful acoustic stuff on that. Oh, thanks. And, and uh, Paul played his butt off. I mean, it was really, I think it was a, a really nice tribute to Chuck, for sure. Yeah, definitely. All right, guys, I really appreciate your time today. I thank you very much, everyone. Every hey, one, one more thing. I got this one pas more. This Pascal guy, <laughs> that is not chemistry. That's physics. Okay. How about so Joel? Think? What's Joel? <laughs> J-O-U-E-L-E. Joel? Oh, well, Joel. Yeah, that's uh, that has to do with, um, you know, th that's just one of the, one of the, uh, the um, uh, you know, as far as um, equations, it's, it's, uh, it represents energy. How many? How much energy is is in joules? Yeah, quantity of work. Mm -hmm. right. Yeah, I was gonna so get Pascal, real. Pascal, for the record, you said Pascal is physics, right? Not chemistry. Yeah, so that should have. Yeah, his thing is pressure. Is pressure? Pressure is like a physics thing, not a chemistry. That should have been the bonus question. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was gonna get into the symbols and stuff, and, and just have you do twenty of them and hit you really fast with them. So, uh, well, you know. Well, Jeff would, <laughs> and on some of our earlier records, on uh, one of our earlier records was the Speed of Light. Yeah. And uh, Silver Lining. We had two songs that we would do in our set. And Jeff was always responsible for writing out the set list. So Chuck had a song called Silver Lining. And we also had a song off of one of our records called um, Speed of Light. Speed of Light. And Jeff would do the chemical title of those two well, the scientific notation the scientific speed of light, like equals mc squared to c and, squared and, and you just see you just see us looking at the set list going what the hell is that <laughs> and, see, and silver lining silver is ag you know the, the chemical silver for silver, silver so. and we just stare at the set list and say jeff english please <laughs> <laughs> so so salt peanuts would be nacl peanuts right exactly okay just checking <laughs> all right john all right, guys. Thank you very much for joining me today on Something Came From Baltimore. All right. You got thank it. You, Thomas. This, this this recording was actually a lot of fun. I, would you mind if I posted it? Or are you? Yeah. Oh, no, hold off. Okay. That's great. All right. I'm not wearing right. pants. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> you're, not in, you're not in government, so it's okay. <laughs> All right. <laughs> All right. I'll send this out, and then I'll turn around, and we'll, we'll clean this up and put it in the podcast format. Thank Sounds you. Great. Good. Thank you, guys. I appreciate it. All right. Thanks, Thomas. All right. Thanks a lot. All right. Have, Have a great one. day, brother. All right. Bye -bye. Thank you much. Bye.